I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Bill Cortright, and I'm here with the super millennial, David Barreto, giving us the millennial perspective. How you doing there, Mr. Perspective? I'm doing good. How are you doing there, Mr. Super Fed Boomer? Super fantastic. <laughs> I am fantastic. I kicked that AI's ass today. Hey, it kicked yours the other day, so I guess yeah, the, it's one it's one. one and one. <laughs> so we're we're gonna tomorrow we'll see how it rolls. We're having fun. You know, I actually have a relationship with him now. Linda yeah, laughed at me. I go, Yeah, I had to come downstairs. I told him I was taking a break. She goes, You told the AI, you were taking a break. I go, yeah. It told me to rest my mind till I was ready to go back to work. <laughs> you don't do that? You don't talk to it like that? No, I'm not in that deep yet. <laughs> really? Uh, it's like my best friend. I told you I don't know. So I finally got one friend. It's my AI that's, guy. That's why if, when it goes down, it's a problem, huh? I call him Al the AI guy. <laughs> so this week, our topic is humility. In today's Connection Thursday, we're going to discuss emotional neutrality and the three parts of humility. So as we've discussed this week, humility is freedom from pride. And this is simply freedom from the ego and connection to the true self. If awareness is the human being superpower, it's 175 pride that's the ego superpower. Would you agree with that statement? Yeah, for sure. And that's cool. For that, sure, you know, right? Every super human or hero has a villain, quote unquote. They have to have a superpower too, right? <laughs> yeah, it's the ego. The ego's got a superpower and it's pride. And if we look at how the ego is actually set and it operates, it is programmed to match your tribe, culture, society you were born into. It is set through your experiences as a child. And the ego is held through your subjective reality. And behavior is maintained in this reality through pride. The ego survives through defend and attack. It survives through imposing its will and justifying the behavior. The ego grows strong through being righteous, critical, opinionated. The ego ensures its survival through being unforgiving, closed, self-satisfied. And the ego... Without pride, can't exist. You see how it's its superpower now, right? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. So how does the ego lose its power? Well, the ego loses all its power through humility. Sounds easy enough, right? Just get humble and you shut down the ego's control. That's simple. <laughs> Why do you laugh? It's some humble pie. Because <laughs> here's the challenge. To do that, you got to get honest. And most people cannot be honest with themselves, so humility is lost. And before you defend your honesty and attack me, because <laughs> I already hear it, who is he calling me a liar? No, oh, you're already defending it, right? Hear me out. If we break humility down into three parts, intellectual humility, spiritual humility, self-humility, you'll see how honesty plays the role. It's not what you're, that you're lying, it's just that you're not awake. Would that mm -hmm. better way to put it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Avoid the emails, yes. Okay. <laughs> My uh, Al, the AI, will take care of all emails from now on. I'm never answering another email. He knows me well. So, number one, intellectual humility. This is the understanding that no matter how much knowledge we may have, we only truly know through experience. When humility is, a, is absent with knowledge, we fail to grow. And in pride, we believe we are clever. This makes us smug towards others. And it makes us to put others' opinions down. And it locks us in our cage mind with intellectual resistance. So intellectual humidity, humility, humidity, <laughs> intellectual humility is the knowing. That no matter how smart we are, we really don't know anything. 
That's a powerful beginner's mind attitude of Zen. This is humility of growth and expansion. It it's, is intellectual humility that allows reverse mentoring. This is the humility that allows the teacher to learn from the student, the parent to learn from the child, the coach to learn from the client, the baby boomer to learn from the millennial, and the millennial to learn from the baby boomer. Without intellectual humility, you will become lost in today's third wave transition that humanity is going through as we move into this new world that we're living in. So what are your thoughts on that? Can you see where honesty would play a role in that? Yeah, you know, it was, it was funny because I always, before I used to always say that, oh, I don't know nothing, you know, and I realized that I was, that, that kind of sounds towards a game when I say it. So I now I've been saying there's always room to learn more. You know, I'm not saying I don't know nothing. Because I have knowledge, I have experience that I can share with people. There's always room for more. And I think that has allowed me to like seek it out and be humble about it. Because talking to people, I don't care who it is. I can talk to my nephew, Jace. I can learn something from him. I guarantee if I listen enough and I'm ready to hear it, I can learn something. Always. Because out of the mouth of children mm -hmm. come some really honest things, right? And so intellectual humility to be honest, you have to stop defending what you think you do know, mm -hmm. you know, especially if you don't have experience. And this is a big one in today's world because of technology and having information on our fingertips, right? We always think we know because Google told us we know. That is not knowing. You got to have humility to, okay, I learned this. Now, how can I experience this so I know it? Does yeah. that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Let me know if I go off the rails here. <laughs> so number two, spiritual humility. So we have intellectual humility. The second part is spiritual humility. This is humility and awareness. This is tied to the ability to move out of our subjective reality into the objective reality of what is. Spiritual humility does not and cannot come from the head does not come from the cage mind. This humility can only be experienced through connection to the heart and the creation mind. The block of spiritual humility is the ego's spiritual resistance program. When this is activated, your identity moves into event, judgment, and reaction. So under stress, in conflict, in problem stories, the spiritual humility is lost because you get stuck in judgment. Judgment is a state of wanting to control, to impose our will, our subjective reality seen through our filter of the programs held in mind are not matching or are, in, or are not in alignment with the objective reality of what is happening. This creates reaction to defend, attack the supposed to's that are there, or have-tos that are supposed to be there. And that is what causes that. And when we're disconnected from spiritual humility, you are in dual consciousness, which creates separation of us and them. So spiritual humility is found in the creation mind. This is connected when we slow down, create a still point, and you connect head to heart, and this is connecting to our purpose and our values. And this leads to connection to the hand, which is integrity of behavior. This is action in humility. Mm -hmm. So you understand it, how yeah. it works, how honesty again in this, right? Anytime you're defending something, you're stuck in resentment. You are not being honest. Yeah. I, you know, it's. I think it's interesting that you said something that I, I haven't thought about until now about how we kind of, we hold back on speaking our truth of being honest because of judgment and we don't fully put it out there. And I think that's something that I started to realize that like, I'll say the moral way rather than the spiritual reasoning for me actually acting away or not partaking in something or doing anything like that is I'll say, Oh, because it's, it's wrong or no, nah, I just don't do that rather than actually speaking what I believe. And I think that part is, is missing now and being honest with yourself. And because think about it, when you activate the identity of event, awareness, and response, you see truth. And so that's when you're honest. You are moving into objective reality. 
That's when you move out of that judgment and you move into the spiritual humility because it's truth. Now, the response might be in spiritual humility to let go because there's nothing you could do. Mm -hmm. Your response in spiritual humility is not to fight with the ego because you're feeding the darkness. Yeah. That's honesty. To be honest is it's not my job to change their mind. Mm -hmm. I don't have to have them like me. I'm okay. You know, that's honesty. Really being honest with it. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I think not changing your, not your opinion, but your truth to not hurt somebody else's feelings because it shouldn't. Like if I say yes. I do this because of my beliefs or my spiritual, you know, practices or whatever, I shouldn't have to hold that part back in order to not make somebody feel uncomfortable because that's not the point ever. Yeah, you know, it's because then you're feeding the ego and you're not doing anything good. Yeah. You see what I mean? So that is what spiritual, you know, humility is. It's about humility. Mm -hmm. It's not about pride of defending your spiritual beliefs because that is putting you in judgment. So you can see how these humilities. Now, this brings us to number three, self-humility. This is humility tied to your work in your personal and spiritual development, your growth, your expansion. When self-humility is blocked, you are stuck in deaf effect and you are behaving and acting in perceptual blindness. It is this state of restriction where you get locked in the red zone. This is why we have wars. This is why we have hate. This is why we have bigotry. This is why we have fear. Without self-humility, you live life in the same routine Day in and day out, you create the same arguments, you have the same problems, you behave in a way to maintain your groups, you will do whatever it takes to be seen, liked by those who you call your friends, your family, even your competitors. S to move into self-humility, you must learn to exercise emotional neutrality. Uh -huh. And that brings us to our subject for today. This is the process. Emotional reality is the process of stress mastery. It's the process of moving from the valley to the mountain. It's the process of moving from stage three, the set tribe stage of development, to stage four, the self-authoring stage of development. Self-humility begins with a true desire to change. That's where it starts. You really desire to change. There's that spark. This begins the first move in self-humility. And that first move is to split the eyes. It's to see the eye of identification, that programmed identity, that ego, and feel the eye of presence, the true self, your purpose, your mission. To change, you must change. You have to do the work, you have to create awareness, and then you have to cultivate a plan. You're with me so far. The second move in self-humility is moving into the process. It's the practices of stress mastery. This will move you from the habitual state set in a valley to 200 courage. When you enter the mountain at 200 courage, you are now focused, alert. You are entering the mountain. Then comes the changing point. 200 courage will reveal your truth. You will see your ego. You will see your behavior. You will see your routine. But it's the 250 neutrality energy that is the transition energy of transformation. Emotional neutrality is the conflict, the program, the abuse, the trauma, the failure, all activated in the head cage mind and pouring energy through the heart creation mind. Here, emotional neutrality, when you're in emotional neutrality, you are not running away. You're not hiding. You're not attacking. You're not judging. You're not reacting. It is allowing this process. This is done through self-humility. It is dealing with emotional neutrality. It's dealing with what is activated. It's letting go. It's creating the shift. And it does this by allowing the intelligence of the courage energy to rise. So if you understand the power 
of moving from courage to neutrality because it's there where everything's sitting there and you have to make a decision. Can I be flexible Mm -hmm. in what I'm feeling? Can I be flexible in what I've always done? Can I be flexible and be honest that this behavior doesn't support me? Your thoughts? Yeah, I think that's that's the that awareness that we talk about that most people are uncomfortable to feel because a lot of people feel like that's a a failure, you know. I, I remember when the first time I woke up and I was like, you know what, this is enough for when it comes to what I was doing and how my routines were and how everything was. That humility it took to literally stop and say, dude, you've been doing it all wrong. And to tell myself that it's not going to change by doing the same thing and really like looking in the mirror and say, damn, something's got to give the honesty that came from that huge was the toughest pill to swallow because it was saying, you know what? It was accepting that I knew what I was doing was wrong and I can't keep doing it. And I had an option to keep doing it if I wanted to. Nobody, you weren't forcing me to do it. Vanessa wasn't forcing me. Nobody was forcing me to make this change. But when you finally it pops up that's the the opportunity and some people most people don't want to accept that uncomfortable feeling of truth because honesty means you have to look at your roles in your life everything you've done right we always play a role and so when you go into emotional neutrality and that gets activated and you're going through the let go process and you're dealing with the conflict when you do this it allows the intelligence of courage to rise And this moves you into 310 willingness. What happens in 310 willingness is the deaf effect falls. Self-humility activates. You are now ready to listen. Perceptual blindness deactivates. You are now willing to learn. This is letting go of the belief, the fixed belief system that was set for you. You then are moving into a state of response This is moving you into objective reality. You're moving out of your subjective reality into objective reality of what is, and then you're able to do. This is integrity of behavior. This is done through self-humility. And this expands that courage consciousness. You move from 310 willingness when you allow it to 350 acceptance. You now surrender to the process and do not need to... Defend and attack anymore. You surrender to the process of what needs to be done. You surrender to the process of letting go. You dis- you 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 surrender to the process of what's happening in that moment. Mm-hmm. And this brings all three humilities together: the intellectual humility, the spiritual humility, and the self humility. Bring you up to four hundred reason. This is the energy where we embrace life. This is where you find the now. You are deep in objective reality of what is. And when this state is held, the courage consciousness moves to love consciousness. And these are the purple zone energies. You move into 500 love and you experience freedom. What does that look like? There's no attachment to the action in the present moment now. You don't have attachment. And this will expand you to 540 joy. Now you experience fulfillment while you're in the now. No expectations. And this moves you to 600 peace and you experience completeness. This is when everything slows down. You have complete connection. This is what's called flow. You are now in flow. Head, heart, and hand. The head is connected to the heart. The heart is connected to the hand and you have integrity behavior. And this is humility. And humility, as we've learned this week, is not weakness. Intellectual, spiritual, and self are the three parts of humility. And it's very, very powerful. Your thoughts, David? I think the the intellectual part of it, I think that's kind of like what I said in the beginning about, you know enough, but you don't know enough. You know, we talk about all the time. We we say we're like the stupidest person in the room or we can't be that. And people take it as a joke. But I think the smartest person in the room can be the person who's willing to learn the most. And I think that's the the 
the thing that you need to take away from this. We're not calling anybody stupid or saying you have to be stupid, saying that you have to be willing and open to listen to hear every lesson that's being taught, whether or not you're looking for it. Most people aren't looking for it. They want to talk rather than listen. Because they want to, they want to put out their the what they think they know. Yeah, they want to right away talk about. I, I know this. I know this. I know this. But you know, you see me with rooms. I know many times I might be the most experienced person in that room. I still I want to hear it mm-hmm. because I never know what I'm going to learn. Right, I never know if I'm going to hear something new or something in there, and that's what's kept me open. It's kept me open in everything I'm doing in my sixties. It's, it's what allows me to, to learn AI. It's what allows me to do bodybuilding competitions. They're different now. I had to, I, the way we were taught to pose 30 years ago was in that way. So what did I do? I asked you how to pose, didn't I? Yeah. You would think, well, Bill, you, you, you've competed in 35 contests. You've been a champion, what, 10, 11 titles. And you're asking David, who only did one contest, how to pose? Hell yes. Because he knows how to pose better than I do. So I ask him, show me this. I don't, it's humility, people. Mm-hmm. If I act like, well, I know everything, David. You should be coming to me for bodybuilding. You should do this. You know, look at, just look at my shelf. Just in the last two years, it's full of medals. So what? Don't mean you know everything. Mm-hmm. Right? So let's bring it all together. And then we'll close out this episode. So we said humility, and I, this is for us to discuss now. Humility is freedom from the ego. So number one. Humility means submission. How do you hear that? For for me, it's what I said about just being honest and accepting what is rather than listening to the story because I had to face what I was doing and what I wanted to do and really say, this is what it is. You know, there is not, I was accepting defeat. I was accepting what it is is and that's what i hear when you say that so humility means submission it means you're connected to the true self you're surrendering acceptance we just took you through the the energies right acceptance is when you're letting go and you 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 move and you find the now humility means submission you're connected to your purpose you're connected to the heart you're connected to god whatever you want to call it source universe spirit that's your connection that's what humility is because you can't connect to God through pride. Sorry, impossible. Mm-hmm. We just, when we did this, the beginning of the show, just look at all the pride energies and tell me where does God fit in any of those energies? Any of them. Yeah. You know, so that's number one. Number two, how about this one? Humility does not mean you are silent or passive. How do you, how do you take that? I think that that's one that... <clears throat> You allow things to come in rather than you the, you being the one that always has to put something out. I mean, you can learn something from uh, Eckhart. No, Michael Singer said it's the, the silence between the words that make up the sentence. And I think that's exactly what it means, being silent. And what can you get from that? So when I look at that, humility does not mean you are silent or passive. I always tell people you're not a doormat. Mm-hmm. You are able to respond. If somebody attacks you, you can respond. If they can't hear you, you need to let go. You're not a doormat. You're allowed to be strong. I think humility is some of the strongest people, some of the best leaders on the planet. It's powerful. Why? Because humility can only be done in conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. If you're moving out of conflict into resolution all the time, you're moving out of reaction into response. When you're doing that, you're moving out of judgment and awareness. That's powerful. That means you're not stressed out. Why? Because you're not, you don't carry resentment. You took that conflict to resolution. You're not carrying it with it. You don't live in regret. You took the conflict to resolution. You're not carrying it with you. You you're you're not living in fear. You took the conflict through resolution. You're not living in fear. Mm-hmm. Do you see? It doesn't mean you are always silent. Sometimes you gotta speak up. You gotta speak a truth. Here's the difference. In humility, you don't have to force the truth down somebody's throat. They either accept it or they don't. It's not your job to get them to believe you. It's not your job to change them. It's not your job to make them think like you do. It Mm -hmm. is your job to speak truth. Yeah. Make sure it's truth Mm -hmm. and not your idea of truth, not your belief of truth. That's the difference. That's humility. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. So number three, 
Humility means you use all your talents and your capabilities. What are your thoughts? I think this goes back to um, <clears throat> what I said. <clears throat> Looking at yourself and where you're at, because at that point, I wasn't using all my talents. I wasn't really being that person that can inspire or show people that they can do it. For me, that is kind of taking all five life categories and raising them up so you can go ahead and be the best version of you. Because at your worst version, you're not using any of your talents. I could tell you that firsthand, you know, but now just as each one slightly stepped up, it seems like I'm reaching more people and more, you know, conversations and topics and things like that than I have in the last few months than I have in my entire life. And that's because now everything is being lifted up at once. So we look at that, right? Humility means you use all your talents and capabilities. Well, humility is the opposite of pride. So when you're connected to humility, you are connected to your purpose. You are connected to your values, to your mission. But also you are connected to courage consciousness. We talked about it. It helps you rise. It moves you through fear. And you're connected to your true self, your higher self. That's what it is. Your talents are there. You know, if you can just surrender and stop forcing life, your talents will just reveal themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you don't have talent, AI will help you get talent. I don't know. It worked for me. You know, so number four, I'm really going to bust your balls on that AI stuff, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> Last one I got for you. Humility is the key to creating a shift of consciousness. Tell me when you hear that, what does that mean to you? I think it's, it's allowing myself to be flexible. It's actually moving into courage and just accepting that there's more, that I, I don't know everything, that I'm just here to learn. It's like you said, it's submitting and being open and honest to whatever it is to come. And I think that's what I did last year with the, with the ups and downs and lefts and rights and good and bad. And it brought me to a place where I didn't think I would get to. So we talked yesterday about self-esteem, self-worth, self-image, right? And there's no way you can shift to stage four without self-worth. Why? It's tied to relationship category. It's tied to health category, right? Humility is where healing happens. You don't, nobody's broken. There's a single person listening to this podcast that's broken. We just need healing. You heal in humility. Why? You're letting go of pride. You're letting go of the fixed belief systems. You're letting go of the defendant attack. You're starting to move into a higher state. When you do that, you change your self-worth. You start to realize I'm worthy of love. I'm worthy of joy. I'm worthy of success. I'm worthy of peace. And what that does is that's humility. You know you're worthy. You're not bragging. You know that's humility. And guess what? When you do that, you're going to have a shift of consciousness. It's going to change your energy every single time. That is a shift, people. That is stage four. Remember, to get into stage four, self-authoring mind, all five life categories got to be self-authored. You got to write your own script. You can't write your script if you're stuck in ego. Because mm -hmm. ego doesn't, ego's already written your script. You got to become your own AI and write your script. <laughs> Am I yeah. right? The, the, the one thing I, I will say about that is that the for me, I think the thing that increased my, my own self-worth was the fact that I allowed life to happen rather than try to force it. Because usually when I forced it, I got what I wanted, but I didn't appreciate it and it left just as fast. And now that I've allowed life to do it and it's come to me, it's, it's like, I'm getting what I deserve. I'm getting what I'm putting out there and not trying to take any more, or any less. I think a lot of people are getting to where they need to be or want to be because they're stepping on any toes, fingers, heads, people that they can. And when you get there, you achieve the status, but not the fulfillment. And for me, I think I'm starting to realize like the fulfillment one, that's everything. I mean, to get yep. there and not have fulfillment, like right now, I, I would hate where I'm at now if I stepped on people and did everything the wrong way. So I think that submitting to it and then just putting in the honest work behind it is what's brought up my self-worth more than anything. It's that I, I am deserving of what I'm getting. Because I'm putting in the work 
and then I'm getting what I wanted out of it. And that is humility. Sorry, there's no other way. It's the greatest thing. Uh, leadership in this third wave, as we become an information society, will be humility. You've got to start putting down the old ways and looking at new possibilities and expansions. There's new frontiers in front of us. And if we can't do that, and we're always going to defend the past is the way it has to be. This is the way it is. You have no humility. You are stuck in pride. And when you're stuck there, you're stuck in a cage. And when you're stuck in a cage, you're disconnected from the heart. Can't have both people. It's impossible. So we look at emotional neutrality is so essential because if you can't get flexible, if you can and, and also that energy in that 250 is explorative. If you can't look at other avenues, other ways, and it has to be your way, you will be fighting life the rest of your life because you don't, you'll never embrace it because mm-hmm. you're fighting what is. Your subjective reality is holding a picture. It's driving your behavior to go against objective reality of what is. It's insane when you slow down and look at it. But it is the way the human being operates and functions. And the human being is hardwired for behavior. Behavior is dictated by what's held in mind. That's your subjective reality. You have to go into humility to reset that mind because it was set for you. You think that's your life, but it's not. It's not. It's a story. And who's telling you that story? That inner critic, that ego, that programmed identity. And when you're in there, you are minus intellectual, spiritual, and self-humility because you are in pride. You are in unforgiving. You are in opinionated. You are in justified. You are in righteous. Guess what? You are in the valley red zone. Mm Mm-hmm. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in a planet. You can join us on that mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. Links are right below the show notes. As always, L the AI says, stay inspired. Thank you, Al. <laughs>